Hey, <laughs> all right, I'm looking here and I think we've got a bunch of people on the line. Um, thank you all so much for joining today. Really excited to have this opportunity for everyone to meet our incredible summer intern, Alejandra. Can you uh, switch the slide, please, Allison? Okay, um, so we're gonna cover a couple things today. I'm gonna give the, uh, the Harvard Club of Dallas's history and things that we have done philanthropically. Um, then we're gonna have a, a presentation from folks at Harvard about the way in which Harvard assists students and local communities. We'll have an overview of the Urschel Fellowship Program by Brian Buffington, who's our VP of Philanthropy. Um, then we're gonna actually hear from the nonprofit that we served um, through Alejandro this summer called Dallas Services, and then Alejandra herself, the star of the show, talking about um, her summer internship. Okay, so quick summary. Um, many people have been around much longer than I, but um, we've, as a club, have been around for over 100 years. Um, and over the years, we have done many forms of service to the greater Dallas community. Um, in the past, we had more fundraisers. We haven't had those in recent years that were focused on specific um, local nonprofits. Um, in the past, we also um, had a program where we tutored underprivileged kids. Um, and that, um, that went on, I think, for about eight or nine years. And that was at a local um, elementary school in an underserved area. Um, we also provide uh, financial aid to, um, to undergraduates through what we now call the Nash Florid Flores Scholarship Fund. This was a fund that was started from what I can see, I think in, this, in the 80s and was funded at that time and people continue to make donations to it. The funds are dispersed by Harvard to a local undergrad based on their financial need. Um, then of course we have our program Talent Service Impact, which many of you are familiar with. Um, the goal of that program is to connect our highly skilled alumni with uh, local nonprofits that are looking for um, particular skilled assistance. And then last but not least, we have our programs where we sponsor undergraduates to do community service internships here in Dallas. And um, in the past, it was somewhat sporadic. Um, I know that we've had some um, interns um, over the years. However, we became much more consistent in 2012. Next slide. Okay, so just to give you a flavor of the kinds of interns that we've had over the years, in 2012, um, uh, we had an intern at the ADA, the American Diabetes Association. In subsequent years, um, a variety of different um, locations had our interns there. Um, Dallas District Court, Commit Partnership, Human Rights Initiative of Dallas, Esperanza International, Iglesia uh, Cristiana Bethel, um, Scottish Right for Children, um, Zan Wesley Holmes Community Outreach Center, RACES, which is a refugee and immigrant center for education and legal services, and then this summer with Dallas Services. So a range of different types of projects as well as organizations. Next slide. Okay, so I just wanted to share a couple of representative quotes. Over the years, we've gotten feedback from our interns in both written form and then in recent years, we've been able to get our interns to also provide videos of themselves explaining and talking about their their summer experiences. Um, and I just want to point out a couple that I thought were pretty representative of the kinds of experiences that people have. For example, um, Rachel at the Dallas District Court a couple of years ago thought that the internship would just be, you know, helping out with day-to-day -day tasks. Um, however, she says, quote, it is not easy to find a valuable summer experience and I'm so thankful that I was given the opportunity to pursue this one with the help of Harvard Club of Dallas. Um, Niat, uh, Niat at Commit Partnership a couple years ago said this summer was nothing less than life changing. She enjoyed all the people that she met, the opportunities that she had with them. Um, and she says, I really, uh, being at Commit really made me feel like I was making an impact on my community. I'm so incredibly fortunate. Thank you so much for providing this amazing opportunity, um, et cetera. So we've just gotten great feedback from the interns kind of experiences they've gotten much more so than they would have anticipated. Um, and as well from the nonprofits themselves talking about the value that the undergraduates brought to them. And you'll be hearing more about it uh, later, this, later during this call from our intern this summer. 
And I think that is the end of my little section. So I'm going to pass it on. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Lindsay Kelly, and um, I'm the assistant director for clubs and shared interest groups, or SIGs, at the Harvard Alumni Association. Um, just to give a little bit of background, um, the HAA is the university-wide alumni association um, with over 350,000 living alumni. Um, and the HAA oversees various areas, including reunions, travel programs, class reports, um, clubs and SIGs. We have uh, close to 200 alumni clubs worldwide and almost 60 shared interest groups. Um, and our team, the Clubs and SIGs team works on various programming, including Global Networking Night, Welcome to Your City events, um, prize book programs, and the Summer Community Service Fellowship Program. Um, so I'm going to just give a little bit of um, kind of stats and then turn it over to my colleague, Alicia. Um, but the Summer Community Service Fellowship Program provides one of the largest sources of income for summer per public service um, for Harvard College students. Um, and this is given to them as a stipend to be used for living expenses. Um, the hope with the program is that it encourages students to pursue work in public service um, and help support them in these unpaid internships. Um, it was established in 1992. Um, I believe the Harvard Club of Southern California was the first um, to offer it. And now we have typically about 20 different clubs and shared interest groups um, across the US that offer at least one fellowship each year. Um, and the fellowships are between $3,500 and $5,000 per student. Um, in 2020, with it being a very unique year and, and all of um, the students needing to do remote um, projects, we ended up being able to have the clubs and six sponsor 22 students. Usually it's closer to 30, but with you know everything going on, um, things were a little bit trickier this year. Um, and then we usually receive about close to 100 student applications for these you know, 30 open positions. Um, and about $100,000 to $125,000 is awarded in total um, through this program each year. So it's a really significant amount. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Alicia now, and you can go to the next slide. Wonderful. Thanks, Lindsay. So hi, everyone. My name is Alicia Johnson Williams, and I work at the Center for Public Service and Engaged Scholarship. And I am so glad to be able to be here to speak to you all tonight. Um, this program is such a collaborative effort, so I'm so glad that all kind of collaborators are here to be able to speak to this program and, you know, just the impact it has. Next slide. And so I wanted to share a bit about what we do at the Phillips Brooks House Center for Public Service and Engaged Scholarship. And it really boils down to making sure that each student at Harvard College has access to curricular and co-curricular um, opportunities to engage in service. And so we work to prepare students for these opportunities and provide multiple different ways uh, for them to engage in service. And so this includes academics, activism, volunteerism, and specifically pre-professional experiences. Next slide. And that's what I wanted to uh, talk a bit about today. And so in how we engage student in practice. And the Summer Community Service Fellowships is one of the ways that we work to engage undergraduates in opportunities to engage with service that are going to support them in their career development and in their professional development. So as you'll see um, in this part of our office, we offer a ton of different opportunities for students to engage on campus and in their own communities. So what specifically is really great about this opportunity is that students are able to, with the club support, able to return back home to do the work that matters to their community. And so if you see on this, our pathways to practice, um, we partner with, in addition to other organizations with Harvard clubs, um, we partner with, um, excuse me, um, organizations across the country to make these opportunities a realistic way uh, for students to learn and serve. And so I wanted to mention just a few other of our programs just to see how, you know, once students, you know, in the summer, there are other ways that they can evolve um, in which the support of this program works to prepare our students for these other opportunities. 
So for example, um, Harvard Spark is a new program that we're working with, with incoming first year students to engage them in service in their hometowns. And we actually had a couple students from Dallas or from the Dallas area uh, working in this program with us this summer. And so we find that um, this is the second year of the program, but we were able to engage students at this pivotal point in their careers to start them off mean, knowing that service could be a meaningful part of their Harvard College careers. And we're hoping that this will set up a pipeline for our students to not only engage in SPARK with some in their first year, but thinking about their subsequent summers and how they can engage with the Harvard clubs to um, continue this engagement. Our other, other ways that uh, folks can engage on, on um, on campus through our days of service. We're having a global day of service on September 12th. And we find that students who are participants in programs like the Summer Community Service Fellowship find a natural way to connect in some of these larger public service initiatives. And lastly, I wanna mention our Winnovation program, which is where we take students who have innovative, cool projects, many times that they're working with them uh, from their summer experiences, so kind of a holdover, and we allow them to come um, to campus for a few days to really kind of workshop their ideas and how to make sure um, that they can, they have all the tools necessary to uh, make a difference in their community. So we try to provide professional development and different tools for them to be able to build upon their experiences. And I think the Summer Community Service Fellowship is one of the biggest tools we have to engage students in this type of work and to prepare them to move forward with it. And next slide. And lastly, I just want to share a bit about kind of the next steps for us as a, a department. You know, we're working to expand our programs to partnerships. We are so, so lucky to be able to work with a club like the Harvard Club of Dallas. We want to make sure that this can be a model for other clubs. As Lindsay said, we engaged about 20 clubs this past year, and there are so many more. And we want to make sure that, um, that other folks and other clubs see what type of great work is going on and how we can scale up and make other opportunities um, like this possible for other students. We want to make sure that there are pathways for all students to engage in public service, to let them know that there is a way for them to engage no matter what their skill set is. There is a way that they can connect with communities. We want to align what public service looks like across the university. So one thing is, I know for the club in particular, you know, you have alumni from all of our different schools, not just the college. And we want to make sure that we are meeting the needs and, you know, having coordinated efforts across different levels. And then lastly, as you all might know, we recently hired a faculty director at the Phillips Brooks House. And so this was our first step in the transitioning to becoming an academic center. And what this means is that we're trying to pair our phenomenal co-curricular and pre-professional opportunities with academic opportunities within the center to help align some of our um, our goals and missions and to help bring in students, uh, different types of students who might not be able to engage in a summer experience, but might be able to find some connection uh, through their coursework. So I'm gonna stop there, but I just wanna reiterate how thankful we are to be able to partner with you all. Great, thank you, uh, Alicia and Lindsay. We really appreciate you taking the time with us tonight. I know it's a little bit later uh, East Coast time, so, uh, we really uh, appreciate the effort you made to join us. So I'm Brian Buffington, and uh, about three years ago, I stepped up and I said, I'd like to be the VP of Philanthropy for the Harvard Club of Dallas. And what that responsibility basically is, is uh, working uh, with the Betsy Bradley and Hal Urschel MD Community Service Fund uh, to, on an annual basis, create an opportunity uh, for a summer intern to be able to give back to uh, the, the Dallas community. Uh, the Betsy Bradley and Hal Urschel uh, MD Community Service Fund was really established about five years ago, uh, formally, although prior to the uh, naming of this fund, the club has a long history, as Rebecca mentioned, of providing community service to Dallas. But uh, we formalized it uh, five years ago. And it has four goals. One is to provide financial assistance to a Harvard undergraduate pursuing a public service internship in the North Texas region. So it is focused on North Texas. Uh, it's a program provided in partnership with the Harvard Club's Summer Community Service Fellowship, which means we provide the community service group actually with the funding and they do the administration. 
uh, which I guess is the tough part of keeping all the tax records. We only need to write out a check uh, once a year. Uh, but the third objective that I want to point out is 100% of the funds are awarded to support the selected intern. I think that's very important. Many of us on this call are on different uh, uh, nonprofit boards and often nonprofits uh, will have, you know, paid fundraisers or, or overhead. Uh, with this particular fund and this particular effort, 100% of the funds that are donated to the program actually go to the student for the benefit uh, of the nonprofit. And I'll talk a little bit more about that shortly. Uh, and in, in terms of providing the internship, the intern provides their services uh, free to the Dallas Public Service Organization uh, selected uh, for a 10 week time frame. Uh, over the past couple of years, we've awarded a, a $4,000 uh, fellowship. Uh, and when you think of it, the, the fellow is actually expected to put in uh, about 400 hours over a 10 week period. So what, what we're basically doing is we're providing the basic uh, funding for a fellow to be able to provide uh, invaluable service to uh, the community service organization that they select to do work with. So let's move to the next page. Uh, if we could flip. Uh, in terms of, of the last five years, ever since we you know, formally uh, named the fellowship uh, for the Urschels, for all the great work they've done to the university uh, over the many years of, of being leaders in the club. Uh, we provided uh, five fellowships. Uh, the first one went to Victoria Jones uh, in, in 2016. She did a project for Esperanza. Uh, in 2018, we actually had uh, two applications that we thought was so convincing, we decided to give away two fellowships to Case Braburn and uh, Fong Nguyen. Uh, Case worked for Scottish Rite and Fong for the Zan Wesley Holmes Community Outreach Center. Uh, last year, we awarded it to Maria Perez Franco, uh, who did work, uh, legal support work for RIASIS, uh, supporting, uh, you know, refugees, undocumented uh, individuals in the country to make sure that their rights were, uh, were served appropriately. And this year, we were proud to be able to give it to Alejandra Nava Garcia, who did work for Dallas Services. So the last, you know, five years, the way I like to look at it is, we gave $20,000 of funding uh, to deserving fellows that resulted in 2,000 hours of skilled on hands uh, support to nonprofits. So but the point I wanna leave folks with here is we're not only providing great summer experiences for Harvard undergrads, but we're also providing uh, invaluable support to uh, nonprofits uh, in the Dallas area, you know, free of course, cost, that serves as really a multiplier uh, to our community. Uh, so so I'm, I'm very proud of the work that uh, the, the club has done. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is, I don't know if, uh, if uh, Dr. Thomas Turnish has been able to join us. He may have had a problem joining the call. Uh, may move to the next slide. Uh, so, uh, oh good, well, we're gonna move right to Alejandro's presentation. So Alejandro can tell us a little bit more about the uh, Dallas services and the types of services they provide. Dallas services is one of the leading, is the leading nonprofit in the DFW area to provide uh, vision services uh, to those that might not be able to afford vision services on their own, you know, through the commercial marketplace. Uh, so Alejandra, you know, actually had five different opportunities to pick from. And the way we typically uh, run the, uh, the fellowship over the summer as we try and come up with a couple of prepackaged fellowships, recognizing that uh, applicants might be too busy to package something on their own, although they have that opportunity. Uh, and then we basically select the fellow based on the quality of their application, their class standing, uh, and uh, they end up being able to pick the nonprofit that they want to work for. And uh, this year, uh, Alejandra was picked uh, based on her application and, and class standing. Uh, and she ended up picking uh, Dallas Services. So with that, Alejandro, I'm gonna pass it over to you and you can talk about your project. Thank you. Hi everybody, my name is Alejandro Nava and I'm a rising senior at Harvard University. 
I am concentrating in neuroscience with a secondary in ethnicity, migration, and rights. Um, I was born and raised in Dallas, so I'm really happy I was able to give back to my community this summer. Um, I was originally going to study abroad this summer, but due to COVID, it was canceled. So I'm really uh, grateful that the Urschel Fellowship was able to accommodate a remote internship. Um, during my time at Harvard, I've actually volunteered at the homeless shelter called Y2Y, and it's located in Harvard Square. I've also uh, been a mentor for the last three years for a program called Science Club for Girls, which is an after-school program at a local elementary school. And I basically go there every Tuesday and lead a science session, and we do experience, experiments with fourth and fifth grade girls. So this summer I got to work with Dow Services, specifically the Center for Vision House, because I know another part of their service is um, a daycare for workers, uh, frontline workers, I think now during COVID. And um, basically the, uh, the Center for Vision Health is a nonprofit non vision clinic that offers affordable um, eye exams and glasses to people who otherwise couldn't afford it. Um, I started off by looking into zip codes in the Dallas area the North Dallas zip codes, um, you could see a, a big difference between North Dallas and South Dallas. Um, North Dallas had a higher life expectancy around late 80s, uh, early 90s, and uh, South Dallas had around a life expectancy of 69, I think. So it was like a 30 year difference in life expectancy. Um, and if you look deeper into the uh, zip code of zip codes of South Dallas, you'll see that the majority of the population there is Hispanic people and black people and um, they're underserved minorities, so they um, lack uh, health coverage. And um, you can also see that, um, I also researched that there are two of the three highest uh, ethnic groups with uh, diabetes. The first one being Native Americans, second Hispanics, uh, third Black people. And with diabetes, there's a lot of vision problems that come into play like cataracts, um, glaucoma, and diabetic retinopathy, and even blindness. Um, my grandma actually suffers from type 2 diabetes, so she had cataracts for a very long time, and she was near blind, but we were luckily able to send enough money to um, have her get surgery to remove the cataracts. Um, and right away, she regained her independence, and she was able to go about her daily tasks, and it improved her quality of life. So um, all this to say that the Center for Vision Health does just that. It improves people's quality of life, and it uh, helps them regain their independence. Um, and it's all people of ages, um, seniors, adults, and children. Yeah, so um, in this slide, you can see that these are, uh, this is a map of the vision clinics in South Dallas. I started by calling up to like 40 vision clinics, I think, 40 to 50 vision clinics. Um, I put them all in an Excel sheet, and then I also put down their address, their phone number, and then I called each vision clinic and asked them, their starting prices for eye exams and um, glasses. Um, separately, their lenses and frames because they are two different things. Um, and I also asked if the eye exams include dilation or if that was an extra fee. And then I also asked them if they took Medicare and Medicaid. And right off the bat, I wanna say about half of them said no. And a handful of them also said under special circumstances. So that's just another obstacle for low-income people to uh, find a vision clinic that actually takes Medicare and Medicaid. Um, so this summer, um, the vision clinic let me know that they wanna do a second vision clinic in the South Dallas area because their existing one is in North Dallas. And the reason why is because they want it to be easier for people to get to this clinic and not have to find transportation and travel maybe 30 minutes to North Dallas to get the adequate care they need. So um, I used Tableau to make this vision map. And then if you could go to the next slide. I also made these graphs with uh, prices for glasses and for eye exams. The price of glasses, I, um, I calculated by just adding the starting price for frames and lenses. Um, it is important to note that these uh, frames were the cheapest that the clinics offered and that the lenses were the cheapest material they had, so it's plastic and compared to the Center for Vision Health, they offer low, low priced high quality glasses, which are normally polycarbonate lenses and durable frames. Um, also side note, a lot of these clinics, I think might've been luxury clinics because their starting prices were $600, which is nowhere near accessible for low income people. Um, 
And um, yeah, I also, after doing um, th this data, I think if you can go to the next slide, I also looked into the Medicare and Medicaid coverage and Medicare offers, it offers some coverage, but it depends on your plan and uh, uh, under your like health issues. So for example, under Medicare Part A, they offer no coverage whatsoever. The patient has to pay 100% of the cost of the eye exam and the glasses. And under Medicare Part B plan, it does offer annual exams, but only if the patient has diabetes. And it also offers um, glasses, but only if the patient has just had a cataract surgery. So as you can see, like this does not offer um, coverage to a lot of the people and only to like a subset of people. Um, I also looked into the Texas Medicaid coverage and they do do a little bit better. They offer, um, they offer coverage for uh, eye exams and glasses every two years. And I even went a little further to check and um, see exactly how much they like cost wise they cover. And I found that Medicaid covers exactly $32 for frames like all across the board, which probably covers the cheapest frames at vision clinics. And um, in total, probably covers like fifty to eighty dollars in glasses, and I'm sure that's not a, a lot for a lot of these clinics. Um, and they do not cover uh, add-on features whatsoever, like scratch resistance or transition lenses, which uh, turn dark in sunlight. Um, all of these add-on features would have to come out of pocket from the patient. Um, and then I moved on to uh, looking for low vision resources in the Dallas area. There are very few low vision resources besides the Center for Vision Health. I did find that uh, a program called Envision Dallas, which was um, used to be known as the Dallas Lighthouse for the Blind. It does offer two trainings, one of them being assistive uh, technology training, um, which is uh, it helps trainers help seniors uh, know how to use their phones and laptops. Um, and they also offer orientation and mobility training, uh, which um, helps prevent falls around the home and uh, helps uh, people with low vision or blindness uh, get around, which is uh, orientation mobility is actually very important if, um, if people want to get a guide dog as well, um, which is one of the other things I looked for. There's uh, only one program, one guide dog program in Texas and it's located in San Antonio. Normally the wait time is one to two years, which is a long time. And I also looked into other programs in the United States because a lot of these programs do offer transportation to and from the campus. Uh, the only problem is that these programs last 21 days long, which is a long time for working class people to request off from work, or it's just not a possibility. Um, so like at least five of these programs of the 15 I found, do offer in-home training, but I believe the wait time is longer. And for in-home training, uh, the trainer would come to your hometown, they would fly to your hometown, and then uh, for 10 days, they would uh, work around your work schedule and have the dog train in your house. Yeah, and then I also found a really great, um, uh, really great uh, free vision clinic actually, and it's a partnership between Oak, uh, Oak Cliff Lions Club and the North Dallas Shared Ministries. And they offer uh, free eye exams and free glasses, but they only offer it on the first, third, and fourth Thursday of every month. So it's only for a couple days of a month, while CBH or the Center for Vision Health offers it daily, Monday through Saturday. Um, yeah, and then if people can't, um, because the wait, long is, the wait time for guide dogs, guide dogs is so long. I did look into other alternatives like um, white canes. They're free for people who apply for them. And um, these smart canes as well, which is, uh, this program's called We Walk, but the, the canes are about $400, I think. So they're inaccessible for people who are low income. And um, as well as a free phone app that called Be My Eyes. And it, um, it connects you with a person with good vision and the blind person can basically, um, the, the person with good vision can basically help the, the person with blindness uh, navigate and, and they let them know there's like obstacles in the ways and what's in their surroundings. So that's really nice instead of having to pay like $500, $400 for a Bluetooth white cane. Um, 
yeah, and I think that pretty much sums up what I did this summer. And um, I really enjoyed my time this summer working with Dallas Services and learning about the gaps in vision care and the incredible work that Dallas Services does to fill in those gaps. And it just made me realize how much I want to work in the nonprofit sector, especially during my gap year before medical school. Well, thank you. I know if, if uh, Tom and, and Tom must something must have come up with Tom, but weather's been horrible here. But uh, Dallas Services really appreciated your uh, input to the organization. I heard nothing but you know tremendous praise uh, from Tom. So it's a shame he's not on the call, but I can uh, vouch that he said you did an absolutely great, phenomenal job. So with that, I think does anyone have any questions for Alejandra? On the project, uh, Alejandro, it's Brian. I have one question. Did, were you surprised at the lack of services uh, for working class people in South Dallas in the vision area? Yeah, I was so surprised. I feel like like vision care and dental care for some reason are separate plans and they're not covered under health insurance. But as the U.S. population ages, we're going to see an increase in vision problems, and I think we need to address those problems and have more coverage for them. Can you say anything about Dallas Services' plans to have a second center in South Dallas? Have they come to any um, it's where very, it's, it or? Yeah, it's very in the beginning. It's still in the planning stages. They're locating, they're trying to find a location for the second clinic and hopefully my map for uh, vision clinics will help them choose. Like I think a little bit in the Southwest region of Dallas, there's a lack of vision clinics there. So I think they're planning on maybe opening it there, but um, hopefully that'll extend like the, uh, the amount of patients they get since transportation won't be a problem anymore. Well, great. Any other questions for Alejandra? Now's your chance. Nope. Good. So I think we're going to turn the mic over to Chidu, our club president. Oh, uh, thanks, Brian. Uh, yeah, first of all, I'd like to echo Brian's words and uh, thank Alejandra for uh, sharing with us the wonderful work uh, that she did at Dallas Services. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Thomas Turnage uh, for giving us, uh, Alejandra and our club, the opportunity to help them. We're also very grateful and uh, thankful uh, to our Harvard representatives, Lindsay and Alicia, for taking us the time. Uh, for taking the time and giving us uh, valuable insights uh, from a university and an alumni standpoint. So thank you. Um, so for everyone, uh, thank you for uh, joining this call uh, and uh, seeing this presentation. So now that we have seen the meaningful work uh, that Alejandra and other students have performed over the years, we may all be interested in finding out how we can help uh, in this very important philanthropic uh, program that's uh, organized by the club. So one of the areas uh, where uh, we need help uh, is with identifying nonprofits and uh, public service organizations here in the uh, Dallas area that need help and uh, can offer internships uh, to the summer fellows. So if you know of any organizations uh, that uh, offer these internships and are interested in helping by being part of the selection committee, so please reach out to our VP of Philanthropy, Brian Ruffington. Uh, the club uh, relies on uh, donations uh, to the uh, Red Sea Herschel Fund uh, to provide the financial assistance to the undergraduates uh, pursuing the internship. Uh, as uh, Brian indicated earlier, all of the, uh, the fund's proceeds go towards uh, funding and providing financial assistance to the summer fellow. So that stipend and assistance that's provided uh, is typically around $4,000. And the club has been able to provide this assistance consistently uh, year over year, uh, thanks to the generosity of uh, its members, donors, and the community. Anyone can donate to this cause. Uh, you don't need to be a member of the club to donate. So if you are interested in donating, uh, the link is here on the slide. We will be sharing this uh, slide deck and the link to donate is also off of the philanthropy tab uh, on the website, uh, Harvard Club of uh, Dallas.com. So we understand that this year has been unusual and challenging. So however, in our typical Harvard spirit, we want to be resilient and we want to continue to help the, con uh, to continue to help the community by uh, promoting this program. And this is only made possible by the support of our community. 
So we are again very grateful for your contributions uh, uh, to this cause and in terms of helping the summer undergraduates gain valuable experience and enrich their lives and also enrich the lives of our community. So thank you in advance. Thank you, Chidu. Any other final comments today or questions? I see a lot of thank yous in the chat room. And uh, I think this consensus, Alejandra, you've done a wonderful job. Thank you so much for all of your efforts this summer. Very good. Thank, thank you, everyone. You everybody. Great. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. All right. Bye, everyone.